Now, this year's Portofari Gala Festival takes place from the 15th until the 21st of July. And last week, we went along to the launch to find out what's happening this year and to meet some of the acts taking part in this year's festival. So today we're in Portoferry for the launch of the Portoferry Festival and who's the first person that I find? Alex Best, how are you? I'm fine Robin, and you? Good to see you down here, so being down here must bring back lots of good memories for you. It is actually, on the way here, it's actually quite surreal because of course I used to live probably about 10 minutes away and I used to come here quite a lot. You know, used to go into the Portoferry Arms and get on a little um, car ferry over to the Lobster Pot in Strangford and quite a few little antique shops I used to frequentate. And, yeah, no, it's, it's just, it's actually quite strange coming so, back here again. So what was it that made you and George want to move down here to Portofogie? Um At the time, George had a few of his problems and we were moving away from Chelsea, which is the buzz of the centre of London, to get away really so moving into Belfast would have been kind of like a bit too much the same of the same so we chose this area for you know of course the coast the sea and the countryside a mixture of both and um, no it brings back some very happy memories I must say you know walking my dog on the beach horse riding over the you know the countryside it, it, it actually made me quite tearful coming through today oh. you know past all the old old spots we're talking about some great restaurants coming down as well that I didn't even know existed. There's loads out here. Yeah. And the great thing is living, uh, living around here, the produce was unbelievable. You know, there's, of course, you're, you're right in Portoferry and, of course, Portofogia, where we used to live. You know, the seafood was amazing and the produce and, and, and the food was absolutely fantastic. So we used to go back to London and think we're being ripped off. The food's absolutely rubbish. Not as good as here, definitely. Of course, we're getting more and more hotels every week popping up in Belfast, and there's going to be a George Best Hotel. What's your thoughts on that? Yes, so we're here. Um, I think it's amazing. I think it's a great, you know, fantastic to have his name to, to it, and um, it's wonderful. <laughs> JP, the Portoferry Festival is coming up very soon. Are you looking forward to it? Can't wait. Well, if we get a day like that, we'll be doing okay. <laughs> it's, absolute, it's been a clinker. <laughs> That's a great lineup this year, isn't it? Oh, well, listen to what we've just listened to there now. Like, it sounds like it's going to be uh, one hell of a week, like, you know. So, uh, between Bagatelle, uh, good Richie Remo there, like those two young guys, I forgot their name, but they sounded amazing as a two piece. Like, yeah. Arlen Molly, they sounded fantastic as well. Like, so, yeah, I think Portoferry's in for a treat. Great stuff. Look into the camera and tell everybody why they should come to the Portoferry Festival this year. If you want to come for a great week's crack, for fantastic music, you got to come. you got to get your bums off the seat and get straight to Portoferry. Do it. <laughs> Ken, tell me this, are you looking forward to this year's Portoferry Festival? I am looking forward to it, and I have to say, what an incredible day today we've had here since we arrived. I got the ferry over, the sun is splitting the stones, fantastico, loved it. Have you played Portoferry before? We played in a, in a hurling club in Portoferry, but that's a long time ago, that could be 12 years ago. So Bagatelle, 40 years on the road, and you're still rocking like crazy. I saw you recently in the Europa Hotel, and it was an amazing night. I feel like Bagatelle's about 8 or 9 years, I can't find 40 years in it at all, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just can't, I just can't. Uh, but I have to say, I've always loved rocking, and it's great to be still able to rock at this stage. I still love rocking as well, not just able to do it, but just still enjoying it, you know. And you know things are good when people like Nathan Carter are starting to cover your songs now as well, don't you? Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> 
You know what? I often feel like we're like flared trousers. If you hang around long enough, you come back into fashion. That seems to be the way it is. <laughs> and back in the day as well, you two were your support act at one stage, weren't they? And they wanted to be back at tell, didn't they? We were on the same bill with them a couple of times, but they never really were supporters. So we're kind of equal billing. But they did say to our John Woods, the late John Woods of Polygram Records, gave us our record deal, and they used to go in and say, if you gave us a chance, we could be as big as Bagatelle, you know. <laughs> and uh, he didn't sign them. <laughs> Some bands and songwriters are happy with one hit, and then other guys are happy with two hits. But you guys have had how many number ones? Lemus has six number ones. Wow. Unbelievable. I mean, I'd be happy with one. I don't even have one. He has them, you know. But that's why we call him the hitman, because yeah. he is the hitman, you know. He just, I, I don't know what it is, uh, but uh, he's obviously born with that kind of natural gift, you know yeah. what I mean? I can only discover recently you did uh, Joe Dolan. <laughs> Joe Dolan, she doesn't live here anymore. Joe Dolan, she, did, she doesn't live here anymore. I tell you, Joe was a gentleman and we loved to meet him every time. He was a great bit of crack as well. I mean, as I say, you probably heard that story I told back in there, but he, that's the character he was. He was a great guy, you know, really, really great guy. And a great, I mean, Joe was a real star from before we were in Nappies, Joe was a star. You know, he was an incredible guy, you know. Tell us a story about meeting him in London with Big Tom. Oh, yeah. Well, we were in the, there was a hotel called the King's Hill in the 90s. All the Irish bands who played in London came and stayed in this hotel. You got a pokey clean room with a shower for £20 a night. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> and one night we went down and Joe was there and with Ben and they had a bucket of champagne and we said, what's the occasion, Joe? And he said, what do you mean the occasion? And we said, you know, the champagne. Oh, don't mind that. He said, I'm off to drink. I said, what would you call it? Oh, yes, I wouldn't call that drink. <laughs> And then about five minutes later, Tom comes down the stairs and goes up to the bar. We're in the corner, he doesn't see us. And Joe said, watch this. And he sings over to Tom, four country roads wind into a town in County Galway. <laughs> and Tom looks over and sings back, it's you, it's you, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to say, what a great man Tom, uh, Big Tom was. When I, I'd never met him until that night. And I always thought he was kind of an austere man, because he was really shy, seemingly, yeah. and big. But in smaller surroundings, he was life and soul of the party. Yeah. He was a great guy. Ah, uh, brilliant story. Ken, just look into the camera and tell us all why we should come to the Porter Ferry Festival this year. Because you'll see us. <laughs> no, no, I'll tell you what, this is a great festival. There's great, great acts on here. There's a great atmosphere here, because we're just uh, down the road from a beautiful place, which is the, 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 the estuary there. Do you know the... the Strangford Lock, as they, as they call it. I've actually flown over this, and I mean, I, f I flew on a microlight, you know, the, it's the motorbike of the air, and it's incredible to see some of the wrecks and all that are out there. So, I'll tell you what, I've never, we, we played here once in a, in a hurling club, but I've never actually integrated around here like I have today. It's fantastic. You're going to love it, you're going to love all the acts that are on, and <laughs> keep on rocking in the free world. <laughs> So Richie, you've just come off stage after playing the launch of the Porter Ferry Festival. How did it go for you? That's right, Robert. It was absolutely fantastic. The weather up here is great and it's lovely and a great day. Like it's just the scenery in the ring is beautiful up here. And then of course you're coming back to play the real thing. It's their third year coming here now and uh, we're on Tuesday the 17th of July and we're really looking forward to it, it's the first date of it and uh, every year it's absolutely fantastic, the atmosphere up here is brilliant and it's just a great place, you know, to come and uh, every year we look forward to the gig every year so it's great, you know, we're back. Are you promoting any new material at the minute? That's right, I think we've about six singles lined up now over the summer to come so uh, we'll be launching uh, our next single very, very soon and uh, there'll be ones following in every four or five weeks so we're looking forward to all the brand new material you know, coming out for the summer and that. And of course the song you have to do at every gig, Hit the Diff, has been amazing for you, hasn't it? That's right, Hit the Diff's flying and you know, uh, it's, it's just great, there's children loves it and you know, we do different types of shows this time of the year and it's, it's great seeing them all singing along and all the family, everybody, it's one for everybody, you know. It's a good stroll down the old dog walk down the Z-I-E-I-A I -E -I -E. met a little girl who stopped to talk about South Bay I -E -I -E. And he asked her friend, what's a hell to do? Cause her hair was black 